Hi everyone, Peter here from Flow High Performance, and in this video we will cover how exercise order in a training session impacts muscle growth. First, let's establish what exactly we mean when referring to exercise order. Exercise order simply refers to the sequence of exercises within an individual training session. So we aren't referring to the structure of the week or the mesocycle, we are specifically referring to an individual session. However, exercise order is a somewhat nuanced topic. This is because there are so many different ways to structure your training session, which makes it difficult to directly compare different strategies. In an individual training session, trainees may perform anywhere between three to six exercises and train either one muscle group specifically or train the full body in a workout. So it is difficult to isolate certain variables and infer results to practice. However, in this video, we will explore the evidence we have on this topic and explore how this may be practically applicable. Before we delve into the research, let's first establish the logical effects of exercise order. The main influence exercise order will have in a training session is effects on short-term fatigue. We will be in the least fatigued state for the exercises performed first in the session and the most fatigued for the exercises at the end of the training session. Therefore, lifting performance is likely to be superior for the exercises at the start of the session and inhibited for the exercises performed towards the end of the session. However, this is only likely to be the case if the same muscle group is trained with multiple exercises in the same session. If each exercise trains different muscle groups, then fatigue of subsequent exercises won't be as significant. So once again, context plays an important role when discussing exercise order. So the acute effects of exercise order are fairly intuitive. We know that exercise order may influence fatigue and therefore impact lifting performance. However, what we really want to know is how does this influence actual muscle growth in an applied resistance training program? Let's now explore what the research says about the influence of exercise order on muscle hypertrophy. The first consideration regarding exercise order is the sequence of compound versus isolation lifts. It is commonly advised that compound lifts should be performed first in a session and isolation lifts last. However, does this order actually influence hypertrophy outcomes? The best evidence we have is this meta-analysis analyzing the research comparing different orders of compound and isolation lifts. The researchers found that gains in maximal strength were superior in the exercises performed first in the session, regardless of whether this was a compound or isolation lift. However, it was found that hypertrophy outcomes were similar regardless of whether compound or isolation lifts were performed first in the session. Another consideration for exercise order is the sequence of larger versus smaller muscle groups. It is commonly advised that larger muscle groups should be trained first and smaller muscle groups last. However, does this order actually influence hypertrophy outcomes? This research was more scarce, but I managed to find two studies comparing this topic. First, this study compared hypertrophy outcomes between training larger muscles followed by smaller muscles versus training smaller muscles followed by larger muscles. The group training in the large to small muscle group order performed the following exercise sequence. Bench press first, lat pull down second, triceps extension third, and bicep curl last. The group training in the small to large order performed the opposite order. Bicep curls first, tricep extension second, lat pull downs third, and bench press last. Even though this study aimed to compare the order of large versus small muscle groups, the study design essentially mimicked the compound versus isolation lift order. Once again, it was found that strength gains were superior for the exercises performed first in the session, while there were no clear trends observed for hypertrophy outcomes. Another study used an almost identical training protocol. One group performed the bench press, lat pull down, triceps extension, and bicep curls in that order, the other group performed the bicep curls, tricep extensions, lat pull down and bench press in the opposite order to the first group. So once again, although this study intended to compare the effects of training large versus small muscle groups in different orders, it actually also compared the order of compound versus isolation lifts because of the study design. Just like the rest of the research on exercise order, it was found that strength gains were superior for the exercises performed first in the session, while there was no significant difference in hypertrophy outcomes. And the last consideration we can make for exercise order is the potential role of using a pre-fatigue strategy. A pre-fatigue or pre-exhaustion strategy is when a trainee intentionally fatigues a specific muscle group before performing another exercise involving that muscle. 
This is usually accomplished by performing an isolation lift for a specific muscle before a compound lift, which the fatigued muscle is a prime mover for. There are many claims made about the effects of pre-fatigue, but let's see what the research says about its use in practice. This study compared the effects of a pre-exhaust strategy versus a traditional training protocol on strength and hypertrophy outcomes. Subjects perform three sets of leg press to failure with 75% 1RM one time per week. One group performed three sets alone, while another group pre-exhausted the quadriceps before the leg press protocol. In the pre-exhaust group, subjects performed one set of leg extensions to failure with 20% 1RM immediately before the leg press protocol. After nine weeks of training, both groups saw significant glute and quad hypertrophy with no significant difference between protocols. However, as we can see, volume load, meaning sets times reps times load, was much higher in the traditional sets compared with the pre-exhaust strategy. These results suggest that pre-exhausting a muscle group may be equally effective at promoting muscle growth while allowing trainees to lift with less total tonnage. So as we have established, the order of exercises in a training session doesn't seem to have a significant influence on muscle growth directly. However, exercise order may influence long-term hypertrophy outcomes through indirect mechanisms. Let's now cover what indirect influences exercise order may have on hypertrophy. The first is volume load, referring to sets times reps times load. As we established in some of these studies, volume load was influenced by exercise order. Generally, if larger muscle groups are trained with compound lifts earlier in the session, more total volume load will be performed in that session. This is because if a smaller isolation lift is performed before a compound lift involving that muscle group, that specific muscle will be more fatigued and limit performance of the compound exercise. While we didn't see any significant difference in muscle growth using a pre-exhaustion strategy in the aforementioned study, limiting volume load could potentially limit long-term hypertrophy outcomes. While this is speculative, training with greater volume loads over time may result in more favorable muscle growth compared with training with lower volume loads. Another indirect influence of exercise order is its effects on joint stress. As we mentioned, exercise order can influence volume load. If trainees can achieve similar hypertrophy outcomes with less volume load, this may alleviate joint stress to some extent. If trainees can lift with lighter loads or fewer repetitions, it is likely to reduce the risk of joint pain or irritation. This may be favorable for those who have particularly irritable joints or connective tissue due to current or past injury. In this case, trainees may want to pre-fatigue a muscle using an isolation lift prior to a compound lift in order to limit volume load and therefore limit joint stress. This can alleviate pain at times when joints are particularly irritable while still resulting in equivalent hypertrophy outcomes, at least in the short term. And the last indirect influence that exercise order may have is on strength gains. While this video is specifically focusing on the effects of exercise order on muscle growth, it should be noted that exercise order does have a significant effect on strength gains. The exercises performed earlier in a training session clearly experience the greater strength gains. Greater strength gains may result in greater muscle growth over a long-term perspective, although this is highly speculative. More importantly, many trainees have simultaneous strength goals in addition to their hypertrophy training. Therefore, if you want to maximize strength, perform the exercises you want to get stronger at first in the workout. So what practical applications can we conclude from all of this information? Well, it is difficult to draw strong conclusions from the data that we have. However, despite common practice, it seems that the order of exercises in a training session doesn't have any significant influence on muscle growth, at least in the timeframes of the lengths of these studies. However, exercise order may influence muscle growth indirectly via its effects on volume load and joint stress. Exercise order will influence total volume load in a training session, which may theoretically influence hypertrophy over the long term. Furthermore, using a pre-fatigue strategy will limit volume load while still achieving similar hypertrophy outcomes. This strategy may be useful for trainees to limit joint stress during times when they have particularly irritable joints. And lastly, if trainees have simultaneous strength goals, then they should train the exercises they want to get stronger at first in the session. Thanks for watching and hopefully you got something out of this video. Remember to subscribe if you haven't already.